We're on the tour in the 90s, and we were going from the south, and we had fans all over the place. The south was so great, and we're going north, right? We're on, we had seven tour buses, I think, at this moment, and we're going north. And I actually went up to Steve Lobel, and I said, man, uh, you know, because he's from New York, like I am. I said, after we get out of New York, we're going to go north, and we're going to hit Connecticut, and, you know, there's white people up there. And he looked at me like I was crazy. So I was actually concerned that, that you know, because we had every show we played at was sold out everywhere, right? And I was like, man, we're getting north, and it's a lot of white people there, and I'm not sure that it's going to sell like it was, like, in the south. And he laughed at me, and, and, and he should have laughed at me because I just didn't know. I learned so much with Bone Thugs and Harmony, I have to tell you, than any, well, except Prince. I learned everything about a song with him, but everything else, Bone Thugs and because he laughed at me. I said, what you laughing about? He said, who do you think buys their records? The guys in the Valley dudes, because, you know, in, in L.A., they call called Valley dudes, all the white dudes, right? People in South Central, he's like, People in Compton, South Central, they ain't got no money. They ain't buy the record. And I thought, I was like, yeah, well, that makes sense. Sure enough, when we went north of New York, even, you know, up past Boston, you know, that's where you're from, north, north of there. And I'm talking, it was somewhere in Connecticut. I forgot where. And, I, you know, I go out before the band goes out, and I make sure the keyboards and everything are set up right and everything, right? And I looked, and I was like, damn. And I hadn't been in front of a crowd like that. Or, you know, back, I think it was the 90s, 96 or something like that. And I hadn't been in front of a crowd like that since playing with France and Madonna and Michael Jackson. So I walked out, and it was packed. And check this out, white faces. And so I'm tripping. I'm thinking to myself, Steve told me that. Because, you know, there's some venues you play that are mostly white and some venues you play mostly black. Well, we were in the mostly white part, and it was packed. And I looked, I went out on stage, and I really felt like there was a shift in music history right now. Because the last time I had been on a stage with that kind of fan, fandom, like you call it, and a diverse crowd, I'm talking about mostly white, and here I am with a rap group. Yes, the, now I didn't know it, but I was playing with the best rap group of all time, period. I mean, bar none. You get me on an interview with anybody from Wu-Tang, and I know a few of them, or anybody from any group, any rap group, I will go blow-to-blow, toe-to-toe with them, and don't put me behind a piano while I'm talking to them because I will embarrass the fuck out of them. You see, I can sit behind a piano or have an acoustic guitar with bone members all around me, and guess what? I start playing, they start rapping, and guess what? They are in harmony, in key. You can't do that with any other, I mean, maybe there's one or two of, you know, like, was it Andre 3000? Yep, he got it, and, and Big Boy. Uh, but but no other rap group could hang with that, and, and that's the true test. Really? You say you're best in Bone Thugs and Harmony? Come meet me at this uh, rehearsal spot, or we're going to be at this spot right here. Meet me out on backstage. And they go, I'm going to play four chords. Let's see what you could do. Okay, one of you will probably start rapping. What are the rest three of you niggas going to do? Or the other two or the other eight talking about Wu-Tang? Guess what? <laughs> they can't hang. They cannot hang. And listen, a couple of Wu-Tangs are my people. Got Joe, Terror Squad, those are my people. But let me tell you this. They can't hang. They cannot hang. 3-6 Mafia is a joke. When they won the Oscar because they did Hustle and Fluff, I fell out of my chair. Uh, you know, you get a group, and there's a, listen, there's a lot of fans, right? They have a lot of fans. But let me tell you something, and I will say this forever, and I'll say it in front of them. Reality is this. They won an Oscar because they got lucky enough to have a song on a soundtrack with a movie that won an Oscar. But everybody, Three Six Mafia or Bum Thugs and Harm, Bum Thugs and Harm, are you out of your fucking mind? Let somebody ask me that question, <laughs> and let there be a, a instrument around. So the easy answer is, you're out of your fucking mind. They're not even close. The hard answer is, what key am I in? And the moment, the moment they go, um, uh, I say, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Crazy Bone could nail it. You understand what I'm saying? The easy, it's very easy to know when a musician's talking to another musician. What key am I in? Bam, bam, and you start talking music. Bone does not harm me because I've been with them for so many years. I could start playing acoustic guitar, just a couple of chords, and then they could, bam on the spot, will write a spot, 
be in perfect harmony and sync and 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 triple up on your shit. Come on, number somebody, 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 and they'll triple and fuck you up. Nobody could do that. Yeah. I'm talking about no who who can do that. Please tell me who can do that. <laughs> Nobody could do it. If they can, I want to see them. I'll make a record with them and I'll pay for it. I own a record company. I have distribution through Warner Brothers. Yes. Let me see who the fuck are you. You could do like Bone. Let's see. There hadn't been a group yet that could do like Bone. There might be some coming up because of Bone's influence. There might be some groups yeah. coming up that can do it because Bone taught them how to do it. But we're talking about during the Bone Thug era. Who could do it? Uh, they couldn't uh, do it. I mean, nobody I, I came across, and I've been on the road with everybody for years, and, you know, I've been in the game now 30 years. Tell me who could do it. Wu-Tang. And listen, <laughs> I love the Wu-Tang. When I'm just listening to, you know, I'm driving through New York City, and I'm listening to, you know, that. Because they all do, you know, they'll do eight bars and then do another eight bars and they get you riled up. And get you, yeah, they're great like that. But nigga, do it in harmony. Let's see what you got. They don't have nothing. Nobody does. And I'm not saying anything bad about Wu Tang. I love Wu Tang. When I started loving rap and Bone Thugs in Harmony made me love rap because I didn't before that. Because Prince said straight out people rap because they can't sing. And it made me not respect any rapper. Then when Bone Thugs, like I said, it was about day four. They started doing that. I was like, this is some different shit. This is something. This is some new shit. These niggas are for real. And and then Lazy told me. And I said straight up, I said, man, you guys are singers. And Lazy pulled me to the side. <laughs> and that's the love that I got with Lazy forever and always and still to this day. Before I put my foot in my mouth. He'll pull me to the side and tell me something. Oh, man, don't tell these niggas they singer. I'm like, why? That's a compliment. Not to them, it ain't. Beyond the heart.